Hi, everyone. I'm Danielle Terciano. And I'm Michael Schneider, and welcome to another edition of Variety's Awards Heat, where we look at the exciting Emmy races, we dissect them, we discuss them. This time out, we're talking about the limited series category, which last year was won big time by Chernobyl. Let's look at some of this year's contenders. Danielle, kick us off. I want to start with Watchmen. There are people who believe that this world is fair and good. It's all lollipops and rainbows. We don't do lollipops and rainbows. Although it aired on HBO months ago, it actually has a resurgence right now. HBO just made the nine episode season available for free, partially in honor of Juneteenth. But I also just think that the story is just never more relevant than it is right now. So I think the combination of the buzziness of the show, Damon Lindelof, the star power of Regina King, who you've called awards catnip and, and rightfully so, I think it makes it a front runner for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still thinking about this show months, months later. Speaking of limited series that feels timely and, and also of the moment, uh, of course, there's Netflix is unbelievable. Even with people that you can trust, if the truth is inconvenient, they don't believe it. Which touches on issues uh, brought up by the Me Too movement, by Time's Up, and also by the cu current conversation about how police uh, and, and law enforcement is depicted on television. It's a very engrossing, very disturbing, very well done miniseries by Susanna Grant. Caitlin Deaver is a standout, but then you also have the power of, I would say, awards catnip as well. Merritt Weaver, she seems to be everywhere these days, and she's great in this. Tony Collette is fantastic in this as well. There's a lot to unpack and, and unbelievable, uh, but definitely a contender uh, in this race. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I actually you know, want to talk about one that was not up at the winter award season. This is America on FX on Hulu. They say that women are like tea bags. You don't know their strength until they get into hot water. Which is nine episode series about the movement to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment and the movement against it, which is just a really fascinating dive into very different points of view. And it doesn't set out to polarize the audience and say one is good and one is bad. It really works to humanize all of the women and to allow you to understand where they're coming from and why people like Phyllis Schlafly would say, I think this movement is not okay. And it's just completely star-studded with Kate Blanchett in that role of Phyllis Schlafly and a stellar supporting cast, Uzo Aduba as Shirley Chisholm and Rose Byrne as Gloria Steinem, just really top-notch performances all around, which I think aid its chances here. And again, when we're talking about timely uh, or timeless uh, limited series, uh, one that uh, also has been around for a while uh, and, and was in the earlier award season and now is up for an Emmy, is The Loudest Voice, uh, the Showtime limited series. We're going to give them a vision of the world, the way it really is, and the way they want it to be. Based on the book by Gabriel Sherman about Fox News and in particular Roger Ailes, uh, of course, the controversial creator of Fox News. Russell Crowe really, really did his homework from the makeup, from the prosthetics, to really just enveloping this larger-than-life character. Again, timely because of the Me Too and Time's Up movement. It's just timely because we're talking nonstop about how Fox News has transformed uh, democracy, really. For better, for worse, uh, you know... Arguably, you know, there's there's one series that we that we haven't talked about yet that kind of feels a little bit like an outlier in theme compared to these others, but I think that might actually help it here. Uh, that's Hollywood from Netflix. I want to take the story of Hollywood and give it a rewrite. This is our screenwriter, Archie Coleman. Pleasure to meet you. You're colored. I love it. It's a completely aspirational version of an alternate 1940s. Hollywood, but it really takes racial inclusion and gender identity and LGBTQ inclusion and puts it in that time period in the industry and allows those people who identify that way to succeed. And I think that's a conversation that A, a we're having all the time, but B, you know, this is also a series that comes from Ryan Murphy and he, in this category, when it comes to real world settings has had a lot of success with the Emmys. So it feels like the, the power of his storytelling here um, gives it a little bit of an edge for a nomination. And that brings us to Little Fires Everywhere. Someone burned down your house with you inside. Elena. 
Do you know anyone that would do this? Granted, is is based on a book like most of these. Uh, it takes place in the late 90s, but nonetheless delves into topics that we're discussing right now at this very moment uh, when it comes to white fragility, white privilege. But this is a show that dives deep into a character study of two very different women and Kerry Washington and Reese Witherspoon and their relationship. But there's also a relationship between these mothers and their children. And the kids on this limited series are also all pretty amazing. So really, really interesting adaptation of uh, Celeste Ng's book and uh, definitely deserve it of a nomination here. So I think we should talk about our picks because I'll say for myself, you know, I don't think any one of the shows we've already talked about is a bad choice. I, I would love to see any of these nominated, but I personally want to highlight something that we haven't talked about yet for a change. Um, I want to look at Unorthodox on Netflix. Where I come from, there are many rules. My family just cares that I'm a good wife and mother. I had to get as far as possible for my community. It was only four episodes, and you know, the series was in a combination of Hebrew and Yiddish, but if you can get past that and you're willing to just enjoy a new language for a change, it's an amazing story about a woman who lives in Brooklyn in Williamsburg and is basically in an arranged marriage in an ultra-Orthodox Jewish community. I will be honest and say that was an eye-opener for me. I didn't know a lot about the community. I feel like I learned a lot and I was very disturbed by a lot of what I learned, but it was just such compelling storytelling and based on a true story. And Shira Haas, who plays the main character, was phenomenal and a rising star for sure that I want to see the Academy nominate her, nominate the show, recognize it now when it's early in her rise, as opposed to, you know, jump on a bandwagon a few years later. So the one I want to talk about is, is a show that you and I, Daniel, have talked about quite a bit, and it still disturbs me all these months later. Uh, it's years and years. I propose that in order to vote, every British citizen must take an IQ test. Are you saying that some people are too stupid to vote? I've got you listening now, haven't I? Uh, Russell T. Davies' look at uh, potential future. But as the months have progressed since I first watched years and years, honestly, it's becoming more and more true. Emma Thompson is amazing as a very right-wing but charismatic politician who says all the right things that the people want to hear. It's a stunning show, uh, only because years from now we're going to be talking about how Russell T. Davies got it right, unfortunately. And that's it for limited series in this edition of Variety's Awards Heat. Join us again next time. For now, I'm Michael Schneider. I'm Danielle Torciano. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.